Hi, I'm Jeff, and welcome to a little sit-down time in my workshop. Today I want to talk about, or at least start talking about, controlling a milling machine spindle motor with the milling machine's controller. You know, a lot of the popular candidate milling machines on the market today that uh, people like to convert to CNC generally come with a pretty basic spindle motor, either just some sort of single-speed AC motor, or as a lot of the variable speed machines do, uh, they come with a DC motor and a DC motor driver. The great news about these setups is that we can actually, with a few goodies, control this uh, start, stop, as well as full range of speed with Mach 3. I did this about two and a half years ago to my machine, and I'll talk about uh, its full uh, lifetime of use uh, closer to the end of the video. So let's just uh, get into it. So I don't have any other footage of actually manually controlling the spindle on this machine after I converted it to CNC. But normally what you'd do is turn your spindle on, set it to the speed that you like with the stock control box, and then hit the go button to cycle start, and be on your merry way. Now the box I'm talking about came on my machine straight from the factory, it's there on the left of the spindle head. It is the controller box, it houses all the electronics that control the machine as it comes from the factory, including the tachometer, the e-stop, the forward reverse selector, and this. This is the spindle speed control board. It's a basic DC motor controller. This one, uh, as it came from Grizzly, is actually a very clever and almost exact knockoff of a very popular spindle motor control board called a KBIC120. This DC motor controller is actually pretty common. It's so common, in fact, that if you were to burn one out, you could find a replacement on eBay. I believe it'll control just about any DC motor as long as you match the ratings of that motor to the outputs of this board. And it has a changeable resistor for different horsepower rated motors. Out of curiosity, I even checked, and the mini lathe has one inside of its control box as well. I even checked in the wiring diagram that Grizzly provides for the machine, and it matches up, it reconciles with the motor driver spec sheet that KB provides for their version of this board. I don't know if it's an OEM sort of setup, or Grizzly is just knocking off the board. I'm guessing the latter. And if you're bold enough to check this out, uh, unplug your machine from power, remove any tools. You can open up the control box, but it won't look exactly like this. It has a lot more stuff in it. That stuff are cards for the tachometer, uh, the potentiometer and switches themselves, fuses, but this guy, this is the essential, the controller of the motor. We can hook it up to power and plug it right into the motor, and then it just needs input for it to run the motor at whatever speed we like. That comes in the form of a potentiometer to control the speed, and a simple switch to turn the motor on and off. So the task now becomes how do we replace that potentiometer and switch? Well, we do it with this card. This is from CNC for PC. No, they don't sponsor me. Nobody does. Uh, but this replaces the potentiometer and replaces that inhibit switch to start the motor. To oversimplify things, uh, the C6 board is essentially a digital I.O. controlled potentiometer. This board will take step and direction signals from your breakout board, much like all the other motion on your CNC machine, and convert that into a 0 to 10 volt analog signal replacing the potentiometer. It also has a relay to control the inhibit switch. It's worthy of note that this board also requires its own separate 12 volt power source. This is separate from the 5 volt that you run the breakout board with. If you're really budget-oriented, or maybe you just don't have any other experience with any other sort of the technology, these DB25 breakout boards that seem to come free with a lot of the stepper motor kits and just with other components um, on, on eBay and other imported sources, uh, these, they're free. Uh, I definitely used one for a while, and one thing to be aware of uh, that I came across when doing research for this specific project is that these do not put out a very clean signal uh, in their logic. 
And now I found this to be pretty handy just to find out in general, and that's something that can actually affect all of your motion across the entire board, everything going in and out of the PC to the machine. So uh, while these are fun just to get, get your footing in and figure things out, it's actually pretty wise and a pretty safe upgrade to move to a better breakout board. This is a C25 and I specifically got it because it directly interfaces with the Ethernet Smooth Stepper. It plugs right into the top and makes kind of a cohesive little platform that's easier to work with in the control box. Uh, I believe the, even this company even offers a breakout board that actually has the 0 to 10 volt integrated into the board, so you likely wouldn't even need both of these, just that. Lots of other different options depending on how you connect to your computer or what system you tend to be running. I'm not entirely sure how that works though, but uh, because I'm sure somebody will probably mention it in the comments. As a basic overview of configuring Mach 3 for this particular setup, we'll first go to the ports and pins menu and make sure that the spindle is enabled and also reconcile how the C6 card is physically wired to the breakout board. In my case, it's pins number 16 and 7 for step and direction respectively. We then want to cruise on over to the Output Signals tab, and we're going to enable output number 1. This is important. We need this so that M code can activate the spindle, not just the button on the dashboard of Mach 3 by itself. Next is the Spindle Setup tab. We want to make sure that the box for disabling spindle relays is not checked. We also want to make sure that the spindle motor output and step and direction boxes are, in fact, checked. That's about it for these pages. Next is the spindle pulleys, and at its most basic this is the speed range you'll have for your spindle. Keeping the machine in high gear means we'll have 0 to 2250 RPM, and this effectively correlates what Mach 3 thinks the motor is spinning at versus the minimum and maximum of what the C6 board is sending to the KBIC controller. If you're running an Ethernet smooth stepper like I am, you will absolutely need to make sure to go into the plug-in controller for spindle and torch height setup. It needs to have a box checked for step and direction control. If you don't have this box checked, if you don't remember to check this plug-in control, uh, your spindle will not turn on. It'll be very frustrating. You'll be like me, stumped for several weeks, wondering why I could not get my spindle to spin. Lastly is the motor tuning and setup page, and we're going to go straight to the spindle tab. The literature for the C6 board wants 1000 steps per, and it recommends 1500 as a velocity setting, although that's something you can modify as you like. You can also alter the acceleration here, and I like to keep that pretty slow when I start out. The card's documentation recommends 3 microseconds for both step pulls and direction pulls. I've played around with these values and not seen any major difference, but that's what the paperwork recommends. Okay, so in general you can see that this is a fairly straightforward process. It was really nice to have the integrated speed control right into my code, right into the controller. I could just hit cycle start, make sure that my tools were squared away. It helped enable the power drawbar project, so I could have now a whole tool library and just do quick change tooling. And it made me generally feel more safe that if I had to do a feed hold or an e-stop or something like, everything would shut down and everything would be generally safe. Now, why is the spindle motor sitting here on the table along with the, some of these cards? Well, one of the things that's just not worth it to try to mess with are the adjustable trim pots on the DC motor controller. It is a... well, it's published enough that I found it readily easy. It is a known hack uh, that adjusting the top speed on these trim pots will give you absolutely more RPM coming out of the motor. And I figured to go for broke and try it and just see what I could do. The stock spindle speed with the internal gearing uh, for this Grizzly machine, I can only get as high as about 2250 RPM, which is not very fast for a lot of tooling, especially when doing CNC and wanting to try to maximize your efficiency with uh, tools, especially smaller ones that this CNC is really more adept to hold. When doing this project initially, I had adjusted the top end trim pot to give myself just a little bit more speed. I boosted it to where on my tachometer I could get about 3400 RPM. Running it on that for a long time, eventually, here just a few months ago, yeah, one of the coils burnt out. And this is something I was honestly expecting. And in doing that, I can only recommend if you want to get any more extra speed out of your spindle, I would go for a belt drive. Uh, you can get better speed, you'll get 
way better surface finish and you'll get better reliability because the internal gears of the mill spindle like to break. It'll also run quieter. All without undue shortening of the life of your motor, if you don't feel like spending a few hundred dollars on a replacement motor on down the line. So with all this out on the bench, you might be saying, well, the motor died, so this is the, the mill's just been dead for a couple of months. This is why, no, no, actually, uh, so I upgraded, and I'm gonna cover that in the next video. It's pretty cool. Uh, those of you who follow me on Instagram probably have already seen it, and I can't share, wait to share the next phase of this project, as well as all the projects coming up uh, on down the pipe after that. Anyway, thank you for watching. Hit that Patreon if you like, hit that like button if you like, hit that subscribe button if you like, hit that button if you button. I don't care. I'll see you next time. Thank you to all my patrons. Bye-bye.